Well, good afternoon. My name is Fred Stallone with ThyssenKrupp Elevator, the branch manager for the Phoenix operation. We're here today to conduct an owner's training session on these three traction elevators at 3rd and Pierce. Uh, I want to start on the outside of the elevator. We're at the main egress landing where you have a couple different functions. Um, this is the main egress floor, so in the event there's a fire um, in the building, the elevator is going to naturally recall to this landing. I don't want to simulate a fire. I don't want to even recall the elevators at this time because obviously there's residents and there's folks using these elevators. But what I would naturally do is there's a key here, and I'm going to give you a, key, a set of keys, and we, we can come back at any time and demonstrate this at a future date if you wish. But this is the Arizona Fire Service key switch. So if you show up here in the morning and you see these elevators are sitting on this main floor with all the doors open, the elevator is recalled on fire service phase one. So that means a heat of smoke in the vicinity of this three car group, it went off. Or it could have been one in the pit or one in the shaft. You don't want these elevators running in the event there's a fire. They're made for the firemen to extract people in the event there's a fire in the building. So what I want to do is if I'm testing this monthly, which is part of City of Phoenix code, and you want to do it early in the morning when it's not disruptive to the tenants or the clientele, is you actually will put this AZFS key switch in this red bezel key switch here. And you can see it's in the off position. And to test it, you'd put it in, and you'd actually go to on, and you'd see this jewel illuminate, and you hear a buzzing sound in each of the three elevators. Elevators are going to recall to this main egress landing. That star next to each of the openings, that star in, um, in, next to one of the, uh, each of the openings there represents the main egress from floor. So in the event there was a heater smoke that went off in this area, you would simply have these elevators recalled to a secondary and alternate landing. Okay, and back to the fire service key switch function. This key would fit right in here just like that. You'd switch it to the on position, the elevators would recall down to the main landing. If you're testing it monthly per the City of Phoenix code, you want to do that off hours. Because like I said, it'll stop the elevator in mid-flight, bring the cars down to the main floor. If the fire was at this floor or a heater smoking off this floor, I'm guessing floor two is probably your alternate landing. But right away, if you come here and all elevators aren't working, doors are open, you know they recalled on phase one, you want to come reset this. You bring it over to the reset position, hold it about five seconds, back to off, and the cars will be put back in service. Like you said earlier, these elevators are tied to the building's fire system. Right. So you may have to reset the fire panel before you reset this key switch. So in the event the elevator is recalled and there was a fire in this building and you had emergency personnel that wanted to use these elevators, they would go inside this, any of the three elevators and take control over it. And they can go to each of the landings and they can extract passengers from certain floors that may have engulfed in flames, whatever it may be. So now they have control. So unless you reset it here, unless you override it there, no one can use the elevators at this point. So to put them back in service, reset, off position, I'm going to head over to the elevator. If you want to pause again, I'll kind of show you some of the functions of the elevator itself. Okay, we're still back outside the elevator uh, opening here on the first floor. I wanted to speak a little bit about the code blue medical emergency operation. Very similar to the fire service. If you had a medical emergency in the building, you actually would turn this to the on position. These two cars with the insignias of the crosses would recall to the first floor. You get in, it would activate code blue inside the car, and you have control of the elevator as well. Not really for facilities, more for emergency personnel like 911 or you know the ambulance team so I wouldn't touch that you don't need to test it monthly it's fire service operations that's tied to the building that's all we have out here um, I guess we can speak a little bit to the thresholds on each of the openings you don't see them in the camera but as we go over there you'll see there's a hoistway side and a car side threshold those sills need to be clean of debris rock paper clips very sensitive and with the construction use you, you could potentially have some debris in the sills that could shut the car down we'll jump over there next thank you Okay, we're gonna pick back up where we left off. We're inside elevator number one, and you can see from all these openings what elevator note you're in. Fire service phase two panel. We were speaking about phase one operation outside. This is phase two, so in the event all cars are recalled and I'm the fireman, I can come in here and take full control of this elevator with activating phase two operation. I'm not gonna do that today, but you have full control, pulls the elevator out of the dispatching group, and you can do whatever you want with it. We're not gonna get into that function today. We can do that off hours if you'd like, not to disrupt. Got some traffic here in the lobby, so I don't want to do that. We're going to go over some of the functions inside the elevator itself. Right now, the car is on independent service, and this is why I suggest putting it on in the event you have a tenant moving in and out of the building. You don't want to hold doors open. I mentioned earlier the thresholds are very sensitive to rocks, debris, and the doors will stall and cause entrapments, and the interlocks don't make up, and the car will fall down on the safety circuit fault. But nonetheless, if you have a tenant moving in and they want to use the big freight car or whatever it may be, you want to maybe give them a key or help them along with uh, using independent service. You can see this car is sitting out of service here on the first floor. We're new, it's actually on independent service as we speak. So everything is done manually as far as constant pressure with all the doors. 
if I let go, that door is going to reopen. See that there? So we're going to close it all the way, and we have full control. This car is not in the group right now. So if I'm moving into the penthouse floor with my belongings, it's not going to stop at any landings. This car is going to go straight to 30. It should. I don't know why it did that. Do you want to come back in? I think I called, canceled that door closed when I pressed 30. There it goes. So naturally this car would be in normal service and it'd stop at all the floors answering car calls, call calls. We have control over it. So if you want to run up to the 30th floor and you have something that's an emergency up there, right. put the car in independent service and pull it out of service for yourself. Same with the housekeeping too. Okay. If you're doing the sills or wiping the door edges, you have yeah. to pull them off. We've, we've seen housekeepers, you know, with vacuums and, you know, cords that are in the lobby and doors close and we see vacuums getting ripped through the doors or shorten out cars. So this is really the way to take control of the elevators, put it on independent service. Car rides nice, no creaks, rails seem pretty plumb. I mean, everything seems good with the car. While we're in here, we could speak about the break-in period. Very sensitive electrical, mechanical equipment, especially during the break-in period. So my suggestion is you're going to expect a couple of service calls, two to three to four in the first 60, 90 days, not uncommon. A lot of moving parts, things break in. We have to come out and make adjustments. You're under a one year warranty period. That would cover you 7.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. All parts, pieces, service calls, in, in addition to preventative maintenance. So you're gonna see our technician come in here on a, on a frequent basis to go through everything. You got 30 openings. So all these doors interact with one another at every of the floors. So there's a lot of adjustments, a lot of break in. You're gonna see our technician. If we can turn that camera this way, I know we're on a construction floor here and I'm not gonna peek too far out, but this right here, these you want to kind of keep clean here. This is kind of more of a sight guard. This dust is construction debris. This is your infrared door opening device. This has got an infrared set of beams on a receiver side and a, and a transmitter side. Believe it or not, dust, oily residue would cause these doors to false fire. Nothing abrasive, just a, you know, a dry cloth to clean the dust off. You can see there's a little construction debris in these sills here. I mean, you got some rocks, you got some, this stuff will actually stall the doors. So my suggestion is if you have housekeeping or if you have a construction crew that's doing rounds, right. I would have them vacuum this now because this is a service call waiting to happen if it doesn't already. And if they're vacuuming thresholds, have them put the car in independent service. I don't want to drop this down 30 floors. But believe it or not, a pebble, a rock, paper clip from the outside from your shoes, it'll shut the car down. Um, let's see here. Car sitting on the 30th floor, doors open, independent service, thresholds clean. You want to make sure you have power to the elevator before you place a service call or if you didn't have a power interruption. What you don't want to do is you don't want to reset the disconnects. You know, as we're trying to troubleshoot the elevator, we want to find it in its down state. If it's in between floors or if it's an issue with the interlock somewhere on the 27th floor, you want to let the car down where you can if you don't have an entrapment. A lot of engineers will come in, they want to throw the disconnect or reset the car. It'll wipe out all the faults. Unfortunately, we can't troubleshoot that way because we plug into it with a microprocessor. We want to know what's going on with the equipment. I'm going to test the phone per code. The elevator needs to be it needs to have its own dedicated uh, 48 volt or 24 volt phone line. It needs to ring somewhere 24 hours, and someone needs to answer. If I was in distress or if I didn't have any and any, any voice at all, or if I had an issue. That'll play again, probably. So that's a recording. That's called the voice chip that's on this dedicated phone line. So this is a ring in a ThyssenKrupp Elevators monitoring service. I just hear it. It's probably going to transfer over here in a second. ThyssenKrupp Elevator, do you need assistance? No, we're just with the, um, the engineering staff and building management, along with the general contractor. We're from ThyssenKrupp, just testing the phone. Can you please decode the building address and the elevator number that we're in, please? One moment. Yep, that's it. No need to send emergency. Everything's fine. Just a simple phone test. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. It's a good thing to test on a monthly basis too when you're doing the phone or doing the monthly fire service. If you got your telecommunications guy, your IT guy doing rounds and you're hooking up phones in some of the rooms, these lines are always mistaken as just an abandoned line. 
they need to be dedicated 48 volt lines and it's good to test them once a month. And it's important that it actually, if the inspector's out here doing his annual test, you wanna make sure it rings somewhere. So it looks like it's ringing to our monitoring service. We're probably taking care of that during the warranty period. What else you wanna run through here, Brent? You, so? um, just for other key switches as well, like uh, Fred was talking about the emergency, the, the code blue, um, that'll just be the emergency personnel. The key he's using right now is for the cab lighting, as you just uh, demonstrated. Then we have a two-speed cab fan. Cab fan's just merely designed to pass air through the, the cab. It's not, not meant to cool it down. It's just basically moving stagnant air within the cab. Um, and then the hoistway enable, the hoistway access, this is for our technicians use only. If you look at the, cap, the key switch here on the door jam, this is how they basically get access to the hoistway, uh, either the car top or the pit. So we'll enable it here and then enable it at the key switch, or I'm sorry, enable it at the key switch in the car and then from the hall side so they can drive the car up and down so they can get access for maintenance. Typically, this is not something you'd want to use. What Don't you do is they split the doors, you can actually run the car up and down the hoistway from that key switch there. Yeah. Biggest things for you, Fan light, this is a two, so L205. These are all L203, these keys are all labeled. It actually is gonna control the two speed fan and it's gonna control the light. Independent service we said was L205, I believe. Let me just confirm that for you. We know what the AZF key switch does. That controls phase two there and as well as in the lobby. Here's L203. Yes, this car will be put back in service. We'll see how the on and off, it just pulls the car in and out of service. So L203 controls your independent service function, which the car is on now. And then I think L206 may, oh, we said that was uh, code blue, code blue. Yeah, so. 203 I think runs, runs off as well. Yeah, doesn't like that. Let's see if L5. They've changed these keys over the year. We can go back through them. We can label them for you so you know exactly. Okay, and then we believe the run stop key switch is L205, which probably was turned over on the construction side, but we'll certainly get you extra copies if you need it. We know what L203 does, just to recap, it, it controls independent service, it controls the two speed uh, fan, hoist enables for the inspector and the technicians. This is your code blue inside the car for emergency medical recall. And then this light is part of that L203. So we should be good to go as far as all the functions. Uh, as Brent mentioned earlier here off camera, we'll just uh, repeat what he uh, suggested. Come in the car and make sure all the key switches are in the normal operating position because a lot of times we'll have the elevator sitting at the certain floor with the doors open not operating because well, we have independent service on. You know, and it's union labor and it gets expensive and we come out and service calls and we want to help you manage your business and manage how much you spend on operating costs. So I think we're done here. We can make our way into the control room, which I think is right around the backside of the shaft to speak about the controllers and what goes on in there as well. So we're gonna leave this car here if you guys are okay with that on pull down service. Okay, now we're in the machi uh, machine room, uh, 30th floor, right behind the elevator shaft. And what we're looking at is the elevator controller. The machines themselves are in the hoist way. So as far as the braking and the systems and all the suspension means, there's nothing in a traditional style penthouse machine room. This is just a control room, not a place where you wanna come poking around. People are get kind of curious on what's the LCD screen. We're plugging into these, reading faults, we're setting up parameters, we're making a lot of adjustments. At first glance, this elevator has a emergency battery rescue, so in the event there's a power failure, the elevator, depending on how much weight's in the car, is gonna go up or down to the nearest floor, open the doors, and let the person out. So if you have a monsoon roll in that does a power blip or you lose phase, you're not gonna get trapped in the elevator. It's gonna stop at the nearest floor, and that's what that backup battery essentially does. I'm gonna close this cabinet door. Looks like we got a lot of MCP manuals up here. The inspector's gonna come in, he's gonna look at this tag. This is the initial turnover tag. It shows that we did the five year full load test. This is done every five years. We put weights on 125% of the capacity. We're gonna drop the car and see if all the safeties and all the mechanisms on the safety sides hold. We also have an annual test that'll be due. It looks like in August of 2020. So that's a lot of things the inspector's gonna come around and check on. He's gonna check, make sure, hey, are the five years up to date? Are the annuals up to date? Are you doing your fire service testing? Are all the door pressures working? They're gonna go through the hoistway and check all the interlocks and everything. So pretty extensive, comprehensive maintenance program they're looking for. My suggestion, this room, as you start seeing traffic pick up, you get heat gain. These things put off a lot of heat as they run more. Yep. Keep the temperature no warmer than 80 degrees. It says 70 to 90. The cooler you keep it, the easier it is on this equipment. It's no different than a computer in your house. A lot more expensive. These things shut down on, on thermal overloads. The boards and everything in there are thousands of dollars. You just don't want to overheat them. 
This is a green tag. This elevator has been green tagged. They're, they're, they're fine to operate per the city of Phoenix uh, jurisdiction. We talked about cycle and disconnects. Here are the disconnects. I mean, it's three phase, 480. You, you don't want to be touching those if you don't have to. If you have to reset the controller because someone's in there, feel free. These are your elevators. We can't tell you what to do. But again, you wipe out everything that we can actually get in and troubleshoot on. So not much to do in here if you're doing your monthly rounds. Just check on the temperature in this machine room. Make sure you don't have any water leaks or anything on the ground that could potentially expose this to uh, moisture. Okay, this is, a, this is a monthly fire service testing log. The city of Phoenix is gonna come in, they're gonna wanna make sure this has been tested each month, whether it's the first day of the month, the last day of the month, it just needs to be done every month. Did you recall phase one? Did you actually test phase two and travel the, let the car travel? And who tested by? Your initials. So they'll come in here, they'll check our MCPs, making sure we're doing routine, regular maintenance, and they're gonna make sure this fire log is tested by building uh, staff on a monthly basis. So it'll be right up on there. And the instructions for that are going to be in our owner's manual as well. Good. Thank you.